everyone. I wanted to come on here and talk about a particular ghost note exercise that I've been using for a while now in the hopes that maybe it can help you out too. I really love using ghost notes in my drum grooves. I think that they can add a lot of depth and energy to your playing and really improve your feel. Uh, and I think it's really important that you develop a good vocabulary of ghost note ideas that you can improvise with. For this exercise, we're essentially going to be practicing to a rhythmic grid. This concept is nothing new and you can apply it to a lot of different aspects of your drumming. So why do I like it so much for ghost notes specifically? Well, there are a couple reasons. One, all the different permutations of this exercise are really practical. You can use them right away in real life playing situations. Two, a lot of the permutations involve some really useful ghost note concepts like playing a ghost note right after a backbeat or right before a backbeat or playing a backbeat in the middle of a string of ghost notes. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to practice this exercise and then I'll demonstrate it a couple different ways on the drum set. But before we get into all of that, I just wanted to briefly mention a couple of things you can practice that will just generally help your ghost notes. The first is to practice your rudiments. All of the paradiddle variations, flam rudiments, drag rudiments, and so on are great for increasing your ghost note vocabulary. The second is to spend some time practicing jazz. If you learn how to comp with your left hand on the snare, you can take those comping phrases and apply them directly to backbeat grooves as ghost notes. Okay, now let's get into the actual exercise. So what do I mean exactly when I say that we're practicing to a rhythmic grid? Well, let's say that we're playing in 4-4. We know that there are four quarter notes in each bar. Now, I'm going to be playing through the ghost note exercises in 16th notes and 8th note triplets. So for 16th notes, we know that there are four for each quarter note, so I have a lot of options for what I can play. I can play one sixteenth note out of each group of four, and I have four permutations of that. I can play two of each group, I can play three of each group, and again there are four permutations for each of those. I can play all four sixteenth notes. I can also play none. Although if you're practicing ghost notes, you do probably want to play some of them, but it is also useful to be able to play comfortably without ghost notes. I can also play every other 16th note. And for eighth note triplets, we're thinking the exact same way, but for groups of three. Hopefully you can start to see where I'm going with this. To actually play this exercise, you first need to choose a hi-hat pulse. For the 16th note version, one that I like to use is basically the straight version of the jazz ride pattern, which sounds like this. And for the 8th note triplets version, I'm going to play swing triplets like you would for a shuffle groove. From there, we're going to play one on the bass drum and three is a rim shot on the snare. Then within that framework, we're going to go through the different ghost note permutations. So I'll go ahead and show you the whole exercise, first with 16th notes, second with 8th note triplets, and I'll play two bars of each permutation.
All right, so that is the exercise. If you're just starting out with this, I would recommend spending some time getting comfortable with each permutation separately. Then when you've gone through all of them, you can work on playing through the whole thing in one go. If you want to get the most out of this exercise, you'll want to get creative with it. Try using all kinds of different hi-hat pulses. Try filling in the spaces between the ghost notes with the bass drum. You could also move your right hand to the ride cymbal and play time or fill in spaces with your left foot on the hi-hat pedal. You can expand the grid to play permutations of things like quintuplets or septuplets. The options really are limitless, so spend some time exploring. All right, that's all I have for this one. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that this helps you out. You know, I really am a big fan of this exercise. If there's anything that you'd like to see me demonstrate or talk about, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.